From the Heart Center on the campus of Holy Cross College in Worcester, Massachusetts, Charter Communications and Charter TV 3 proudly present live coverage of NCAA hockey. Tonight, RIT comes into Worcester to battle Holy Cross in a critical Atlantic hockey showdown. Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the rink. Kevin Shea alongside former Holy Cross standout Mike McGuire. And Mike, this is a huge weekend for Holy Cross. Eight games remaining in the regular season. Crusaders coming in tied for first. A big weekend tonight and tomorrow against RIT. Every game, every weekend is so critical from here yeah, on out. Yeah, it is. And unfortunately for them, every game in this league is now hard. I mean, we're looking at the standings. It's only 11 points separating first place from 11th place. So every team is good. Anyone can beat anybody. Uh, so it's a huge game, and, and um, every point counts. Yeah, you're right. Parity is the word when you talk about Atlanta hockey for Holy Cross. The weekend starts tonight against RIT. It is the Crusaders in action. Hockey night in Worcester. We're back with the opening faceoff right after this. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. You can't get Worcester weather from a Boston TV station. The sun could be shining in downtown Boston, but the weather could be very different here in Worcester. People tell me all the time how much they count on our weather forecast, and we know how important that is to our Worcester News Tonight viewers. Each weekday, we'll give you your weather, your 10-day forecast for right here in Worcester, only on Worcester News Tonight. Worcester's only local forecast, weeknights on Worcester News Tonight. The national anthem played here at the Heart Center. And we are getting ready. The light's coming on. There we go. Let there be light. Holy Cross and RIT. RIT struggling in their last seven games, just one win, one five and one. But it's it's a deceiving record. And you know, you and I talked to Coach Berard before, and this RIT team started the season off on fire. They were one of the hottest teams in the league. Then they've cooled off. But you know, you look at the games and you look at the scores, and you're talking about one goal games and this is a team that's beaten some of the heavyweights uh, in the nation in yeah. Providence and, and Northeastern. Yeah, they have an aura about them as well. They're arguably the most successful team in the history of Atlanta hockey. Uh, three of the past five championships they've won, and they're only they're only five years removed from a Frozen Four. So, uh, you know, they have a pretty good track record of success. So that record is a little bit deceiving. And like you mentioned, they beat they beat Providence, who's a top ten team in the country. Um, I think they tied Northeastern, yeah. who's a top 15 team in the country, so these guys are good. All right, we're going to get the opening face-off. Ryan Farrell will take the draw for Holy Cross. Holy Cross, one of the top teams in the nation in face-off winning percentage. It's something they put a lot of stock into. It's something they put a lot of time and effort into during practice as well. It doesn't happen by accident. It is something that is stressed. Yeah, the kids... The kids are so talented today that everyone tries to play a possession game. And when you're starting with possession off the faceoff, that's a leg up on, on the competition. RIT 
Chips it in the zone. Paul Barafato in the net for Holy Cross, making his 93rd consecutive start. That is the longest streak in the country. All right, Tina shot. Barafato with the save, the rebound, slid across the creep. Crease, nothing there. RIT living up to their billing. They will shoot from anywhere on the ice. Mulcahy ships it in the zone and goes for it. Holy Cross bangs it in deep. Here comes RIT, a very big defense. Mike, and they're a team that uh, will take some chances offensively. Yeah, they will. One thing to watch for, they have a couple guys that are really good at just going to get rebounds. Brown in particular, uh, you know, gets a lot of, he calls them gar garbage goals, but be important for Barafato to try and control rebounds as much as he can. Scott Pooley with a dish in the shot just wide. And that was whistled on net. Rebound in front. Cronella. Cronella, a late start. Holy Cross had an injury right before the, really right before the game, just yeah. about a half hour before the game. And Peter Cronella stepping in. Couple shots, Pooley shot deflected up into the netting. Scott Pooley with 18 goals. Tops in the nation. Hobie Baker Award nominee. Yeah, that was a great shift by that line. Uh, they came out, they, I mean, on the on the change, they came out flying and just pinned RIT for that entire shift. That was a great, great 45 second shift by them. RIT coming off the draw. Trying to get it in deep behind that Holy Cross defense, they do so. Moore, TJ Moore has always been one of the leading scorers for this team. They're looking to get him on track. He's a kid, remember last year he dealt with some concussion issues. So much talent though. Oh yeah, he's, good. he's kind of one of the few guys, they've had a lot of guys score in bunches. Lopez has been on a streak now. Uh, Pooley, been pretty hot all year. Uh, they'd love to see TJ Moore get, get hot here. Moore battles at the blue line. RIT able to get it out, Ferguson. The freshman for Holy Cross, Logan Ferguson. Very talented player for this Crusader team. Holy Cross making really quick shifts. I think that kind of plays into Coach Berard's strategy of playing fast. Good back checking by the Crusaders. Sarawit. RIT. Back on the attack. The Tigers send it in. Barafato knocks it to the corner. Deflected on. Paul Barafato with a nice save. Good deflection at the top of the crease. Holy Cross looking to set it up offensively. They go D to D. Maritor wraps it in. The pace of this game is incredible right now. Feels like a playoff game. No whistles, too. This is yeah. just end to end action. Long rebound off the back wall. He's calling a hook for Holy Cross. Spoke too soon. It was a really slight, so I was just thinking it's one of those games where you don't want to see it disrupted by, by whistles and, and power plays, but this was just enough. Refs are calling all these these days. Whenever you get your stick parallel to the player and get the tiniest hook, they're calling it just to try and prevent prevent that, that kind of interference flow of the game. There's Paul Bar Barafato. He leads the league in save percentage. He's second in goals against average. 11th in the nation in save percentage. She's having a phenomenal year. Yeah, it kind of last weekend kind of kind of proves how how much faith Berard, uh, Coach Berard has in him. I mean, he gave up four goals in the first period. 95% of the time, that goalie is getting yanked, and he left him in there, uh, which kind of I think just speaks to the faith he has in him. RIT. RIT is a high-scoring team. Their Achilles' heel has been their defense and keeping pucks out of their own net, but offensively, they're a talented team. Yeah, on the power play. Haven't really found it. It, it. it seems like they've kind of settled on Andriano, but they had a lot of challenges in net, uh, which seems to have gone away uh, based on the shutout that he had against Canisius last week. 2.88 goals against average for the freshman, Andriano. RIT gets into their power play, set offense. Triangles just going through triangle to triangle. Yeah. Barafato with the stop in front. Beautifully cleared away right in front of the net. Laughing. 
there's Brown. Like he said, he, he goes to the, the, the dirty areas and try to get, tries to get those tough goals. We can even see that all night. Yeah, 16 goals on the season for Brown, one of the top scorers in the league. Holy Cross, nice job on the penalty kill so far. Mulcahy, the captain, able to break it up. 24 seconds remaining on the man advantage. Holy Cross with possession. Sends it in. RIT will wind it up. Down to 15. Here come the Tigers. Shot deflected. Battle behind the net. Spencer Trapp, one of the veterans. Will Brophy as well. Okay, he chipping in for Farrell. Farrell, big body shot on, and Andriano the save. Stolen in front. Pooley, shot save. Pooley back in front. Oh, beautiful save by Andriano as he robbed Kevin Durar. Moore with a shot, the rebound, Pooley. Moore on top of the crease and he scores! T.J. Moore, fourth goal of the year. And the Crusaders have struck first. It's 1-0 Holy Cross. Yeah, I think T.J. Moore just prevented himself from getting an earful from the coach. He had a nice opportunity to shoot right in the slide. He's got such an amazing shot, and, he, and he, I think he probably wishes he got it back, and he just kept fighting. And that's just a, that's just an example of going to the areas where you can score right in the slot. And uh, good persistence. That was must have been four scoring opportunities within like 15 seconds for those guys. He's just the guy you need to get high. He's only got three goals. I mean, he had three goals in the first game last year. So sure. it's a good sign. Well, you're talking about a team, and, and Coach Berard was talking to us about it. You know, when you hit the playoffs, if you can have three lines that can score consistently, you're going to be tough to beat Absolutely. in the postseason. And he is a key for Holy Cross's depth and depth of scoring. Crusaders continuing to pressure. Nine different Holy Cross players have reached double figures in scoring this season. So they have had good depth of scoring. But when you can get a goal scorer, especially like Moore, really changes things up. Here's Moore again. Moore with a shot on. And Adriano the save there. This is exactly how, that shifts exactly how, oh, we might get matching penalties here. I saw TJ Moore gave a little little tap to one of the RIT players who came back with a, a pretty big spear. And Durar was pointing to the, to the referee and said, you saw it. I, I'd get both of them at least. The spear, though, was was the, the most concerning from the RIT side, I thought. I don't think, I think Coach Berard agrees with me. I just heard him say spear as well, which yeah. was the only, I mean, pushing and shoving's fine, but that was a pretty, he did it right, right in front of the ref, too. Right. Let's see, let's see what the refs dole out here. They had a good look at it. I, I would I would give it an extra. I, I mean, that was a potentially a game, I thought, for, for the yeah, RIT player. Um, it looks like they're just going. Gotcha. I think I think Holy Cross it might be end, end up on the power play here. David Perard in his fourth season as the head coach of the Holy Cross Crusaders. He's had great success with this program. They've earned the bye into the Atlantic Hockey Tournament the last two years in a row. Was Perard, a former goalie at Providence College. Yeah, he's done a really nice job. One of the things I, I, I like about this, this team is the makeup. A lot of times, you know, you'll see a team has 10 seniors or, you know, 10 freshmen. Um, it's eight seniors, seven juniors, seven sophomores, and five freshmen, which is a good balance of, of you know, veteran leadership and, and youth. Yeah, and see, he's, he's doing exactly what you were talking about with the spear. He was, you could see by the hand motions, he was saying that that was 
That was an egregious penalty there, the spear. Yeah, and it was. You got four. From what I saw, two referees and two linesmen. So T someone should have saw it. Yeah, seen it. T.J. Moore, I think, I don't want to say instigated, but tapped. It was like a, a little tap. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then the guy came back with a pretty hefty spear, um, and then it just kind of snowballed from there on both sides. But Let's see. I like the, I, I, if I'm Holy Cross, I like the idea that it's been a real track meet, five on five, and yep. they're skating pretty well. Kind of like the idea of just not as much whistles there on the power play. All right, so they got the extra. Whatever it was, RIT got the extra. The extra penalty. It's a good opportunity for Holy Cross. You go up two early on in the first period. Oh, yeah. That'd be. RIT just trying to rag the puck a little bit here and take some time off the penalty. Under a minute remaining in the Holy Cross power play. Moore gains the blue line, dumps it in around the horn. Lopez goes for it. Lopez has started to heat up as well. Seven points in a three-game stretch this month, including four goals. Wholesale changes for Holy Cross. 35 seconds remaining on the power play. Ferguson fires it in. Cronella and Mackey go for it. Cronella to Maritor. They go D to D. The one-timer blocked. Johnny Coughlin, Mr. Steady back there. Yeah. Always a great plus minus. Yeah, he's 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 good all-around player. Blocked in front, Ferguson, Cronella. And the penalty is up. Teams now skating five on five. Say this is a good start for Holy Cross. Coach Burrard doesn't doesn't overcomplicate what makes them good, which is their work ethic and, right. and skating fast, is the yep. way he put it. Face-offs. One by RIT. The shot deflected wide. Ferguson goes for it. Paul Perifato, the senior. Really upped his game this season. And Coach Perard said early in the year we were mixing and matching with defensive pairings, and he had to bail us out a lot, and he did just that. 11.52 remaining here in the first period from Holy Cross. The Crusaders leading RIT 1-0. My name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Shea with Mike McGuire, former Holy Cross hockey standout. Holy Cross taking on RIT tonight. Atlantic hockey action. The Crusaders coming in tied for first place in the league. Eight games, including tonight, remaining in the regular season, and then they begin the playoffs. And that is the ticket to the NCAA tournament. And the first round will be hosted here at Holy Cross. I mean, host, hosted here in Worcester at the DCU Center. But if the Crusaders would qualify, they would play at the DCU Center. They don't, at least according to what the NCAA is saying now, they don't, they try to cut down on the travel as much as they can in the first round. Yeah, especially if you're a host school, even if you're a four seed, a lot of times you get to play at home. Um, I mean, that's, it's been tough for, for uh, I can't remember who it was last year, but they were the one seed and got chipped out to play in North Dakota in the same bracket as North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, that doesn't, no, yeah, so much not for an advantage. a good regular season. But yeah, I would think that they would get a get to stay. Lopez with Skelly. 
deflected. Holy Cross, Lopez on the wall, dumps it back in. Farrell and Mulcahy battling for it. RIT coming out of the zone. Chipped up. Holy Cross sends it back. It'll be icing. Matt App, the captain, going back to touch it up. Since that first shift, and the first shift, not including the power play, RIT had a couple good looks, but I feel like Holy Cross has, has really picked it up uh, since that time. Eric Brown on the wing right now for RIT, the leading scorer for the Tigers. Holy Cross wins the draw, though. Lopez trying to clear it. Mulcahy does. Here's Mulcahy at center ice. It was actually Farrell who chipped it out. Moore gets a stick on it. Brophy. Not out. These are the battles. The battles along the wall. Beautiful shift. Oh, and he rung the iron. Sensational. Gabe Valenzuela. Wow. Beautiful stick handling. Yeah. Rung it off the post. Those are tough turnovers when you're right at the blue line, trying to do anything to get it out. Those are the battles, too, that Coach Berard talks about. The competing down wherever those, those battles may happen. McKay got it, kind of handcuffed him. RIT keeps it in the zone. Coughlin goes back for it and able to clear it away. Holy Cross will get a change. Scott Pooley's line out there right now. Pooley has been quiet relatively. The last three games doesn't have a goal. For him, quiet with 18 goals. Big hit in the neutral zone. Pooley looking for Cronella. Another big hit. Yeah. By Cronella. Behind the play. Pooley. Laughlin takes a bump at center ice. Cronella, good chip, just chips his man off enough to allow the defenseman to get it. There's a lot that the forwards can do, you know, as a former defenseman that uh, that help the guys on the back end. Oh, absolutely. The, I mean, you talked about the face-offs. That was the first thing I did when I went on the ice is look to see who my center was because I know if it was a certain guy who was going to win the face-off back to me, we'd start playing, you know, try get on offense rather than playing defense right, right away. Playing on your toes versus your heels. Exactly. RIT trailing it one nothing, but with possession now in the Holy Cross zone. Farrell takes a hit. I remember Roy Sommer, the former coach of the Worcester Sharks, talking a lot about, you know, guys being willing to take that hit to get the puck out of the zone. Oh, yeah. And, to, and to, you know, you got to be willing to, to sacrifice your body to do a little thing. It's not going to show up on the stat sheet. You just got it out of the zone, but you got crunched for it. Absolutely. Those turnovers are the most costly right inside the blue line. Kind of. They might have too many men on the ice here. Oh, no. He was, he was making sure that they didn't change on the icing. Okay. They, they don't have a change. It was icing. Yeah, look, look, look at the shot. This was a Gabe Valenzuela. That was a really crafty play and a quick release uh, that beat beat Barifato, but caught the post. Valenzuela's got 21 points this season. That one deflected just wide. Andriano gets it up and into the netting. So now RIT can change here. Faceoff will come to the left of the freshman goaltender Ian Andriano. That's and it. we have a timeout on the ice. We'll take it alongside and be back with more from the Heart Center right after this. If you feel like you're getting knocked around by the big insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Whether it's a car accident, slip and fall, or dog bite, don't sign anything from the insurance company until you've talked to a lawyer. 
Hiring a lawyer can double or even triple the initial settlement offer. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Let the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia fight for you. Welcome back everyone to the Heart Center. Kevin Shea with Mike McGuire. Atlantic hockey action tonight. Holy Cross taking on RIT and the Crusaders with a 1-0 lead here with 8.04 to play in the first period. You can kind of feel that. I mean, this is the, they've played RIT twice already. And you can kind of feel that they're familiar with each other. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of chippiness. And I have a feeling Coach Berard probably, probably stressed discipline to his guys because even that, that hit on Cronella, Cronella caught a little bit of a, tiny bit of an elbow. Might have been inadvertent. But you saw him go right back yep. and play a big hit um, on the RIT defense, but uh, Matt Apt. Laffin will take the draw for Holy Cross. Cronella and Pooley, Pooley on the wing to Coglin. Coglin takes it down low by the goal line. Coglin driving the net in the backhander turned away. Laffin's got it. Laffin cycles it back oh, deep. We got a, oh, we got a tripping a call. Beautiful job. That's Pooley working hard and Laffin working hard behind the net. Man, those guys are a handful. That was a, that was a, all started by Johnny Coglin, just anticipating that play, doing a good pinch. And I thought that they, they almost had one there, but those they were buzzing, and um, that's just a hard work, hard work play. Here's the penalty here. Yeah, clean, clear cut trip, um, and good job cycling by these guys. And power play. This is a big. This would be big goal. Cooley said he actually dropped a little weight in the off season. Worked really hard in the off season, off season on his conditioning. And uh, David Brard said he's he's quicker. He's about he's a half step, step right? quicker. Faster. No, he's, in, he's, always, he's always put up goals, but put up 18 this, this early. Uh, you know, he attributed it to speed. Yeah. And he's still a big body at 6'2", 200 pounds. Yep. Yeah, we were talking about which of the kids will go play pro after most of the seniors will at least try it. I think he's got an opportunity to be a, yeah. to be a pretty good pro. And, of course, you're, you're talking about growing up in a hockey family and his father, Paul Pooley. That's right is the associate head coach at Notre Dame. The Irish having a phenomenal season and uh, was a coach at Providence College for years. David Perard knew him from his days at, at Providence. And coach Perard coached with him. Yeah, he's closing in on 100 points for his career too, which is it's not easy to do. No. Get 92 points. No, and it's, it's consistency. You know, you look at his numbers, freshman, sophomore, Absolutely. junior year, he's put up numbers consistently. Coglin wraps it around the wall. Maritor, and it's chipped out. Holy Face Cross off. might have gotten away with Mackey, but I thought a foot off sides. <laughs> on that one, but <laughs> kids are skating so fast up there that it's, it's hard to catch. Make it happen, right. Still loose. Call it a penalty. Interference on Holy Cross. Yeah, I'm curious to see this one. Cronella, they're going to call it on. Peter Cronella, Massachusetts native from East Long Meadow. Let's take a look at this. This is, I guess, yeah, I guess since our RT player didn't have the puck, but it's kind of in it's his skates. His that's yeah, that's that marginal, feet. I would say. Put it this way, if he doesn't go down, it's not, I don't think it's a call. If I he stays on his yeah. ski skates and just gets knocked back a step, yep. then it's play you. on. So the teams will be oh, four on go. four for half a minute. Oh, beautiful look. Just couldn't Pooley. get the puck to settle. He was in, he just couldn't get the puck to settle. Laughing down low. Pooley. Pooley working on the wall. Kicks it to Laffin. Pooley trying to dig it out. Myra Tor keeps it in. Here's Pooley. Coglin wants it. Coglin. Beautiful shift. Coglin fires on. And the save by Andriano and things getting a little chippy, a little physical. That's more of the stuff you see usually the second game of yeah. the weekend series. I usually know. Friday it's 
it, it kind of builds a little bit, and then, but this is started right this off is, the hop uh, here. A great How about move? I don't know if he was mad that he just didn't score here, but he, I mean, it, that was pretty close to getting some sort of roughing call, especially the refs try to keep control of this game. And it's getting chippy. Into the goalie. That was a great move. That's, that's it? two that, that he's. Yeah. Showing off his tonight. skill. Now, the power play for RIT, minute two on the Tigers' power play as they cycle it down low. Stayed on side, shot in front, blocked by Holy Cross. Crusaders have done a nice job blocking shots this season. One timer fanned on, Mulcahy tries to clear. Can't do it. RIT keeps possession. Venezuela. Shot oh, in the wow. one timer. I don't know if he missed that or Barrafato saved it. Oh, well, actually, it might have it. been might have been Farrell that saved it because Barrafato seemed to just thank him right there. Yeah. Let's see, and that's Miles Powell too, who had the one timer. He is the Hobie Baker Award nominee. Barrafato smiling, so I'm curious what happened here. Well, oh, I think it was. I think it was Farrell that got a got a stick on it and deflected it out. This is uh, you watch Brown. Brown just puts his back right to the goalie. He's yeah, a big right. body in front. He's just been, anytime they get possession, 5-on-5 five or 4-on-4, five four four, he goes right there. So that's where goals are scored. <laughs> and he gets a lot of them. Right, right in Barrafato's grill. Barrafato's got the glove hand on Brown's back. Now Brown looks for something down low. Good job of Holy Cross collapsing defensively. And they clear the zone with it. Myra Tor was able to clear it up, and Holy Cross getting some wholesale changes here as we're even strength. Big penalty kill for the Crusaders. That was a huge kill, yeah. Lopez with the steal in the neutral zone. Farrell in deep. Farrell taken down, and, and he draws a penalty. Calling a tight, calling a tight game here. Slash. That on better out. be careful he doesn't get a misconduct. Yeah. Well, Apps, too, was one of those big defensemen. You know, uh, Coach Berard talked about their size on defense. You got 6'4", and App, McKay, 6'5", 6'4", 6'2". Yeah. Big boys, they're not happy right now. When we return, Holy Cross with a man advantage. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Here's the penalty. They're, they're, um, I thought that was very marginal call. I think Apt has kind of good reason to be, to be upset. He's calling. I think the ref's trying to keep control of the game, but it's kind of disrupting the flow a little bit here. As much as as much as we want Holy Cross to do well, that that uh, I liked seeing that that first five minutes looked like a I mean a total track meet, a fun hockey, just back and forth. Good to get back to that. Holy Cross wins the draw. More now, RIT with the steal. Lopez. Breaks it up. Crusaders will start up ice. 1-0 Holy Cross lead. Pooley splits the D. Pooley sends it in. And Andriano covers it up. It's a good try by Pooley. Just couldn't, couldn't get it over to Lopez, but it's a good breakout. The break, I mean, half the battle with power play is, is getting it into the zone and getting set up. And Holy Cross has been doing a pretty good job. Laughing, working hard behind the net. Holy Cross gets possession. Spencer Trapp. Moore. Tic-tac-toe passing. Moore, beautiful job gloving that one down. He was like a third baseman there on a hot shot. One-timer by play. Pooley blocked. Battle for it. RIT comes away with it. Now Moore has it at center ice. Moore to Lopez. Pooley. 
Still loose. RIT sends it down the length of the ice. Under a minute remaining in the Holy Cross power play. Moore's playing well tonight. Made a couple really good passes there. Under three minutes to play in the first period. Well, if he can get clicking offensively like he's done his entire career, that's really good news for this Holy Cross hockey team. Is tied for first tonight, and as David Berard said, they're still not. Everyone's not clicking. Yeah. Still, they still haven't played their best hockey yet this year. Ferguson dumped as he enters the zone. Cronella can't keep it in. Myra Tor goes back for it. There's Peter Cronella. Dump and chase. Beautiful Ouch. hustle by Cronella. He wow. took a huge shot into the boards. Coglin deflected wide. Body's flying all over the yep. place. <laughs> Shipped out of the zone. Two minutes to play in the first period. The penalty is up. We are at even strength. Lopez ships it to the neutral zone, and RIT sends it in. Barafato stops it behind his net. Coglin starts it out for Holy Cross. Lopez and Mulcahy going for it. Trap keeps it in, fires just wide of the net. Farrell, good poke check. Skelly, one-timer by Trap, deflected up into the netting. Face-off will be to the left of Andriano. The intensity is up on both sides. This is a fun game to watch. A good end-to-end -end action. 124 remaining in the period. Holy Cross with a 1-0 lead over they're, RIT. Their D like to make you pay. Man, they got some big kids back there. They certainly do. The big physical group. group. Yeah. Off the draw, Pooley shot just wide. It's something their scoring chances off the faceoffs is, what, 60, 65 percent? I think yeah. Coach Berard said of their goals have come as a result of winning faceoffs. Yeah. He calls, they, I mean, they have a set face. Set face off every time that they drop the puck, whether it's offensive zone, defensive zone. And I like that one. That's a yep. simple one. Just draw it back to your best shooter on the team. Um, fortunately, Pulley's had a couple misses, uh, like a couple good opportunities that he's just missed on. Laffin will take the draw. RIT has it. He'll start it up ice. Stolen by Moore. Laffin between the circles, shot on, blocked in front. One minute left in the period. Coglin, that one's blocked as well. Cameron starts up ice with Brown. Valenzuela is a tough, yeah. tough guy to stop on the ice. He's got he's so quick like a he's water shifty. bug and just yeah. great hands. He's got good lateral, quick movement. RIT trying to throw it on. That one's blocked in front. Holy Cross tries to clear, can't get it out. And Laffin does. Pooley with more. Good poke check by Apt. Brown sends it in. Valenzuela in front. Mulcahy marking Brown. The one-timer blocked by Pooley. Deflected wide. Spencer Trapp back for it. And Trapp sends it out. And that ends the first period of play. Well, as you said, Michael, a lot of chances early on for RIT, and then Holy Cross seemed to control play. Yeah, I thought that that was a good period. I think they're going to be happy going into the into the locker room with a lead and feel pretty good about uh, about the way they're playing. All right, Holy Cross with the lead, one nothing. After one period of play, we're going to send it back to the Worcester News tonight studios for a news update, and then we'll be back with more from the rink right after this. And welcome back, everyone. First period intermission. And you get a look at T.J. Moore's goal, 5:31 of the first period. And that was his fourth of the season, giving Holy Cross a 1-0 lead. Johnny Coughlin, you and I were talking about it, Mike. Boy, he had a couple sweet rushes, didn't he? Oh, he did. I think I think Coughlin and, and Moore in particular really stood out uh, in terms of
some of the better players for Holy Cross. But yeah, Coglin, Coglin was doing it all. He was blocking shots. He was you know, rushing, creating opportunities. He was great. And we saw that sign on the side of the Zamboni. Vote Scott Pooley for the Hobie Baker Award. The Hobie Baker Award is the Heisman Trophy for college hockey. Scott Pooley, one of the nominees. So we'll take a short break, and when we come back, it is the second period between Holy Cross and RIT. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. You can't get Worcester weather from a Boston TV station. The sun could be shining in downtown Boston, but the weather could be very different here in Worcester. People tell me all the time how much they count on our weather forecast, and we know how important that is to our Worcester News Tonight viewers. Each weekday, we'll give you your weather, your 10-day forecast for right here in Worcester, only on Worcester News Tonight. Worcester's only local forecast, weeknights on Worcester News Tonight. Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Shea with Mike McGuire. Thank you for tuning in tonight for Holy Cross Hockey. The Crusaders in front of the RIT Tigers, 1-0 after the first period. And Holy Cross has five games on the road. So it's a home-and-home -home weekend tonight, tomorrow against RIT. Then they finish with five games on the road, and then finally at home right before the start of the playoffs. But those road games, Canisius, That's really right. tough Hard team. Trip. Mercyhurst, always a phenomenally good team. And AIC, such a good team now, and AIC's program and how much they've elevated that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those 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 are not easy trips. I mean, and they're not quick trips. You know, it's the Buffalo no. and You're right. Pennsylvania, um, and hard places to play. So, um, so yeah. I mean, unfortunately, there's just no more no more pushovers in no. this league. AIC used to be one, and they've yeah. like you said, they've completely turned it around, so they've done a good job there. And a ton of a ton of European players, a lot of Swedish players. Yep. You know, it's interesting. You look, and you and I were talking about RIT, the majority, all Canadian players. I think they have two or three American players. Holy Cross, majority American players, couple Canadian players, you know. Uh, AIC, so many Europeans and Swedish players. It's, it's, it's good that they did something different, AIC. Like the Europe, I mean, right. what, what they were doing wasn't working, so. Kudos to, to that, that new coach. Second period underway. one nothing Holy Cross. RIT with puck possession. Holy Cross able to clear the zone. Miles Powell is RIT's nominee. Not that every team gets a nominee for the Hobie Baker Award, but he's nominated. Mulcahy in the slot. Carries. Fires. Nothing doing. Farrell keeps it in. Here's Lopez. Lopez, big body, good scoring touch. And the save there. Andriano. Holy Cross out shooting RIT 12 to 4 in the first period. And that's huge because RIT, even when they lose, generally outshoot their opponents by a wide margin. That's a good point. And, and on top of that, I mean, Pooley in particular, I could think of three or four shots that missed the net that didn't count that I, I would consider scoring chances. So I think they outchanced them, which um, I mean, that's one thing that, that Coach Berard, his team measures up every time, is scoring chances for versus against. And I think they won that battle in the first period. Holy Cross wins the draw. Coglin kicks it forward. Cronella sends it in deep. Andriano can't get it. Pooley gets to it. Laugh and turn around shot blocked. Comes out to the neutral zone. Coglin delivers the hit. I don't think Coglin likes these guys. No. Too much. I like it. I like the intensity I, I, yeah. which he plays with and kind of sets the tone. Definitely. It's definitely been an intense game. Heads up. Yeah, that was, McKay was going for the big Scott Stevens old school open ice knockout hit. Charlie Barrow blocked in front. Holy Cross with some good traffic in front with Laffin. Barrow 
Softly sends it to the corner. Pooley takes a big hit. Battles for it. Gerard, who has an assist in this game on Moore's goal. Moore. Moore. Turns back, throws it. Just deflected. Farrar battling. And here's Brophy. Stolen. McKenzie fires and just misses the net. Long rebound. All the way down the ice. Ferguson gives chase. Ferguson Whoa. with a steal and put it on net. Beautiful play by the freshman. It's a couple bad turnovers so far by our team in their own zone. Brophy looking for Sorowick. Three minutes of whistle free hockey. Yeah. A lot of traffic in front here. Oh, it's loose right on top of the crease. I don't think Verifano saw that. No. <laughs> no, that was a dangerous play and a good play by RIT. The traffic in front. And obviously that's what they're going to try to do. It's so tough to beat Paul Barafato cleanly. Yeah. You, you've got to get guys in front of him and make it difficult for him to see the puck get deflections, second chance opportunities. Barafato leads the league in save percentage. Second in goals against. 11th in the nation in saves, save percentage. That's pretty good. And how about the Ironman streak? We haven't really got to talk on that, though. This is his 93rd consecutive start. Yeah. That is best in the nation amongst active goaltenders. Yeah, you don't see that often. Um, I mean, Coach Berard has a goaltending background, so he knows what he's doing. But, I mean, it's rare, rare yeah. to see that. And you're playing back-to-back -back nights every weekend. You yeah. know, it's almost like a football schedule when you get into the league schedule because you, you work all week long for two games on the weekends. You're playing Friday and Saturday nights, and then you're working, working, working. But, you know, that's a physical toll and a grind. Yeah. I mean, it's not even uh, like he's been pulled. He's played every single minute <laughs> for, uh, for this team uh, this far into the season. That just doesn't, you just don't see that. Often. No. Oh, we got a break here. Oh. And it speaks volumes to his conditioning level. Oh, definitely. And mental toughness, too. You're right. I mean, if, I don't think he had, he'd have mental toughness if in the game when he gave up four goals last weekend, Almost every time that goalie gets pulled. And I, I'm sure he's got the toughness that Berard said, you know what, he can handle this. Yep. Kind of like a good good pitcher that gives up a home run and, you know, Stays comes right, right back. back and, yeah. Yeah. First whistle of the period, wow. five minutes yes. into the period, and we get our first whistle. The faceoff will be to the left of Paul Verifato. Well, this is a, uh, it's mentally tough, but also a very smart hockey team is there. Great point average, 3.34 in the fall semester. 24 of 28 players had a GPA 3.0 or better, and that's, 11 made the Dean's List. That's a good good recruiting job by Berard and, and, uh, and Brock and Peter Roundy. Uh, I mean, it's not easy to get a, a 3.34 any semester here. Uh, that's a really good job. And some of the kids, I mean, we were talking about uh, Mitch Collette, who studies electromagnetic theory, I think it was. Yeah, that's which it. I don't even know what that is. No, <laughs> neither do I. 3.89 physics major. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. And to just to balance the demands of, and, and as we were talking about with Coach Berard before the game, it's not just, here's Laffin. Good save by Andriano. TJ, Michael, Michael Laffin with the bid there, and we've got our first Time out of the period, 14.25 to play in the period. A free-flowing period, still 1-0 Worcester. If you feel like you're getting knocked around by the big insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Whether it's a car accident, slip and fall, or dog bite, don't sign anything from the insurance company until you've talked to a lawyer. Hiring a lawyer can double or even triple the initial settlement offer. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Let the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia fight for you. Great coach when I was there. Okay. He just started. Welcome back. There's David Berard, the head coach 
of Holy Cross in his fourth season with the Crusaders, as we mentioned. He, and he's been in the league before. He was an associate uh, head coach and interim head coach at UConn, so knows the league long time on the Providence College staff, was a member of that coaching staff when they won the national championship, his alma mater. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good hockey guy, and they've done a lot to kind of get the right resources to make this a really good program that people want to come play at. And we'll, t I, you know, and I love just little things that he does too. But I love the father-son weekend. They did That's a father-son weekend earlier this year. They had all the fathers come in and on a Thursday, and they they went out to dinner. All the fathers and the team and the players went out to dinner, and then they took them into the locker room and, and did a film oh, did a film session with them. Almost stolen in front. Moore with another bid. T.J. Moore scrapping for the loose puck on top of the crease. He is dangerous right now. He, he He's is playing, with confidence, playing really he? well. And that's a that's a move you try and pick up. <laughs> you just try to do play. it here against this team. Yeah. Here comes Brown. Really dangerous goal scorer for RIT. The leading goal scorer for the Tigers. Wrap around attempt broken up. Brubacher. Fires Barafato to save the rebound. Oh, a beautiful save on Valenzuela. Valenzuela's had some excellent opportunities tonight. And Paul Barafato with two sensational saves right there. That was good defense by Moore right before this save. Here's the save. He gets his, he flashes that left pad out just in time Ooh. to stop that. But I think TJ Moore might have saved the goal right before that on a potential wraparound that Barafato was on the wrong side of the net. So he's playing a 200 foot game right now. Brett Mulcahy, Lopez. Here comes Brown back the other way. Brophy putting the body on him, or Spencer Trapp, rather. Trapp, good job on Brown. Skating with him the whole way. Valenzuela, top of the slot, fires just over the net. Brown behind the net, tough guy to bump off the puck. Oh, he's good. All right, T going D to D with it in front. Backhander, wide of the net. Wrap around, Barafato with the save, still loose. RIT with a great shift. A lot of opportunities for the Tigers. Mulcahy trying to pin his man up against the wall. Brown comes away with the loose puck. Trapp gets a stick on it, knocks it wide. And Holy Cross clears the zone. That line for that line for RIT with Brown and Valenzuela and Cameron. They've been the ones generating pretty much all of their scoring chances in offense. They've been playing pretty well. Here's Pooley. Pooley, the red line. Pooley gains his own, is tripped up. Penalty coming. Shot on by Cronella. And a save by Andriano. But there's the speed yeah. and, the, and the work in the offseason that Scott Pooley did to make himself faster and quicker. You saw it right there. I mean, from the games we did last year, I don't remember seeing that speed. That was, I mean... He's getting pretty fast. He yeah, I think he's got the potential to be to be to be good at the next level. Uh, like if you told me that he spent that time in the AHL next year, that would yep. that would shock me. More, more. Had it just poked away at the last minute. Trap, trap, looking for a shooting lane. Trap and more top, and that one's blocked and. RIT defender slow getting up after blocking that one. That's Alden Dupuy. It was a good hit by Trapp. I th think he was probably mad that he took that shot back there. That wasn't a high quality power play shot. Andriano can't get to it. Pooley does. Pooley throws it in front. And Laffin just couldn't connect. The defense was there for RIT. Pooley. Chips it down low, Laffin goes for it. Moore, Lopez, collects off the wall. Moore spins back. T.J. Moore going behind the net, Laffin. Laffin carries to Trap. Trap wrister through traffic. Moore throws it in front. And Pooley got a stick on it, but it was blocked by RIT. 48 seconds remaining on the Holy Cross power play. Crusaders with a 1-0 lead in a fast-moving period. 11 minutes remaining here in the second period. Pooley 
Gains the zone. Pooley bumped off the puck on a big hit. And RIT hit. clears. It's interesting. Now the Tigers was, can lay the wood. That was apt to make that big hit. We got three penalties in the first period. And I don't know if it's still a rule, but fourth one used to get you kicked out of the game. But it's not slowing him down. That was a pretty, no. pretty good hit. Ferguson oh. draws the penalty, and Holy Cross will have a two-man advantage for 12 seconds. They will have back-to-back -back power play opportunities if they do not score in the first 12 seconds here. 12 second two-man advantage. Big opportunity. Coaching staff. Here's the penalty right there. Yeah, I mean, it was a trip. I'd say, it, you know, kind of marginal just given how many penalties they've called thus far. <laughs> and I don't think that their coach, I think Wayne Wilson, no. is pretty upset. No, he's not happy in the least. He's a veteran here. He's been 19th season with RIT. Played at Bowling Green in 1984. So would he have played for Jerry York? Oh, that's a good question. He may yeah. have. Yeah. He may have played for Coach Jerry York. 12 seconds, two-man advantage for Holy Cross. One-timer by Pooley. Blocked and out of play. He makes, Pooley makes a lot of smart decisions. I think Coach Barrage telling him right now, don't get a five on three. Don't take a shot from, don't take a shot from just inside the blue line. Like set it up and try and get a Chris more McKay quality. blocked that for RIT and he's still trying to shake it off. Three seconds on the man advantage now. It's a five on four for Holy Cross. Crusaders trap as they skip a pass. Andriano got a glove on it. Now he's ticketed for the top corner. Here's Pooley behind the net. Minute 30 remaining on the Holy Cross power play. Back-to-back -back power plays for the Crusaders. Moore has played a phenomenal game for Holy Cross as the only goal of the game. Down low. Lopez, score! Oh, good power play. Danny Lopez! Hey, I don't think he's gonna show up on the score sheet, but Scott Pooley deserves some credit on this play. He's such a distraction in front of the net. He kind of plays the same role that if you watch the Bruins, Patrice Bergeron plays. Just tries to get open for a simple pass. So Pooley's in the middle right here. And for about 30 seconds, RIT was just so concerned with him that you know, Lopez was able to get a little space and put a good shot, good release. Yeah, and Lopez. Lappin comes through the front here. He does, yeah. So I don't know if he doesn't look like he touched it. It looks like it's Danny Lopez's 11th of the season, but you know, we talked about it, Coach Berard said, if Lopez can get going, he had that three-game stretch here in January where he scored four goals, seven points in three games. He gets going. This is a really dangerous hockey team. Absolutely. Yeah, if you get Pooley clicked, Lopez clicked, and Moore clicked in, they're dangerous. Holy Cross with a 2-0 lead here at the Hart Center. We're back with more NCAA hockey right here on Charter TV3. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Shea with Mike McGuire. And David Berard and his Holy Cross Crusaders with a 2-0 lead on RIT. Holy Cross coming into the game, tied for first place in Atlantic hockey. So big, the top five teams get the bye. In the top five in, yep. the, uh, in the Atlantic hockey, get the, the first round bye, and that's big. You're talking the first rounds, a two out of three series. Just, uh, Holy Cross has gotten that by the last two years. Just to get that rest, and not two come off a, of a you know. Yeah. And more often than not, those series go three games. So you're talking about a tough physically, mentally, you know, to get the extra week to rest your body. Yeah, get into that top four especially, because four plays five. Five gets the bye, That's but right. they're on the road. Yeah, it's you're a right. big deal. The top four, you got home ice. I mean, the difference between playing RIT here versus RIT at RIT is, is really You're big. Right. And Canisius, Mercyhurst, oh, you know, absolutely. like you were talking about. Those yeah. are 
Those are long trips. Coglin, no look, shot just misses. Rebound! And Andriano got a piece of that as he robs Lopez, who was looking for his second, just seconds apart. Danny Lopez trying to look for Mulcahy, just broken up in front. Mulcahy cycles down low. Holy Cross. This is this is a good good shift against their top line. The guys that have been playing good. Here's Brown. Leading goal scorer for RIT. Driving in the net. Barofato with the save and he holds on. Brown just using that big body to shield off the defense. That's that was good. Good defensive play by, by Barrow not to, I mean, I thought for sure Brown was gonna get it, get an inch and maybe get to the front of the net. So Barrow just does a nice job. I mean, this takes a lot of strength this way, this way to work out. But um, I thought he might have a little step on him to get to the front, but Barrow did a great job. And RIT able to keep it in. More behind the net. Blocked. Gerard blocked it, deflected just wide. Good bid for RIT. The Tigers circling the net, the shot. Powell just misses in front. RIT playing with some desperation now. Brubacher at the blue line. Ferguson battles. Ferguson trying to get it out. And here comes TJ Moore on the rush. One on one, Moore. Spins around, taken down. Two nothing game, you're not gonna get that call. Pernella in on the four check. Trap. Powell has it for RIT. And Cronella rap checks it away. Here's Pooley. Pooley dumps it in. Cronella with a heavy four check. RIT skates it out. Fires on Barafato, the pad save. Shot on, that one's deflected just wide. 6.58 to play in the period, 2-0. Holy Cross with the lead on RIT. The team split their first meeting of the season. Back in December, the first two days of December they played. Oh, Pulley can they get a possible two-on-one here. And the shot just skips across, Surwick. Peacock battling for the puck for RIT. Here's App, the big defenseman, one of the captains. Coglin. Peacock is a big body trying to take him off the puck. 6'6, 220. Coglin is my guess for someone that's going to get a penalty pretty soon. Holy Cross chips it out. Pete Kessel, the freshman. Fourth line out there for Holy Cross. Mackey, Surowick, and Kessel. Here's Charlie Barrow. Barrow knocks it back into the RIT zone. Coglin pinned up against the boards. Dangerous deflection. Barrafato got the waffle on it. Been out there a little while. Yeah, long shift. Coglin's played a lot tonight. Barafato got a piece of it. He looked behind him. RIT has really controlled play here the last uh, he three that. minutes. You, you knew it. You said it, Mike. Barafato, the save hangs on. And Holy Cross will be whistled for the penalty. It'll be an RIT power play, but you called it. You said it during yeah. the last break that you thought that Holy Cross, the next penalty was going to go on Holy Cross. Yeah, this is just, I mean, this was a good shift by RT. Just hard work created that penalty. Little, little tiny stick, uh, but he was calling that on Holy Cross, so I guess you could say he was consistent there. Called that for Holy Cross. Yep. Yeah, this is a big kill. Eric Brown out there, Miles Powell. Yeah, they get their first unit Valenzuela. rested, well rested. This is a good offensive grouping for RIT, their power play. Tom. 
5.08 remaining in the second period. 2-0 Holy Cross with the lead. They have scored in each period. RIT with the man advantage right now. Brown's just camped out on the crease. Valenzuela. And the shot Good deflected kill. up yeah. and into the netting. Good job of that pen penalty killing unit. Yep. Brew Baker, one of those big defensemen. Yeah. 6'4, 205. And they just, there's a lot of big kids on this team. Yeah, some of the kids on, on Holy Cross, I mean, the the the, the Mackey line, you know, Kessel and Sarawick, they haven't had much time because there's been so many, so much special teams, and some of these guys have logged a lot of minutes. Yep. Pooley and Lapham. That one. Coughlin. Just wide from Apt. Valenzuela. Got Norsh on his left. Valenzuela dip, dumps it down low, gets it back. Brown again, just right in front of Barrafato, now goes to the corner. Brown doing his work in the dirty areas, right on top of the crease. Good poke check by Pooley. Stays in the zone, though, and it's deflected by Brown just wide. Battle for the loose puck. Laughing with a good battle on that far wall. Here's Valenzuela. Down low, cross wow. ice. Wow, what a, what a save. Apt with a one-timer, and that was a sensational post-to-post -post save from Paul Barrafato. Barrafato trying to look around Brown, makes the save. Coglin clears Brown, but if you watch Barrafato, I was watching there, he's literally straining his neck to look around yeah. Brown. With this save, I mean, this is a great passing by RIT, but just to get post-to-post -post that quickly, that's a great save by, by Barrafato. Let's get a look at it. Wow. Good pass by RIT, too. 24 seconds on the power play for RIT remaining. 3.35 in the period. Could be a huge kill for Holy Cross. Brophy blocks it up into the netting. 12 seconds. 12 seconds remain on the power play now. 3.30 in the period. Holy Cross was able to get a change of personnel on that last Whistle. Peacock trying to wrap it around. Held up behind the net. Willette, the blast. Blocked. Mulcahy got it. Another block. This time by Farrell. Oh, Barrafato with a good save. A lot of traffic in front of Barrafato. Makes a good save. Peacock was on the doorstep. 6'6 six, six and 220 pounds. And Paul Barrafato coming up huge again for Holy Cross. 3'11 left in the period. Crusaders 2, Tigers nothing. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. We are back at the Heart Center. Kevin Shea, Mike McGuire, thanks for tuning in tonight for a great NCAA hockey, Atlantic hockey. Holy Cross and RIT, the Crusaders, with a goal in each period, they lead it 2-0. We'll be back on the hardwood Tuesday night. A great city rivalry, Clark and WPI in men's basketball. That one's going to be a good one. Good new Mac battle. The Holy Cross killed that penalty off, and that was big. And you and I talking yeah. about 3-11 left in the period. If you can get into the break here with a two-goal advantage. Yeah. It's one of the, I kind of feel like Barrafato might have a concentration headache right now. He's got so much traffic in front of him. And he's just got to, like you said, just look around and scream as much as he can. They put a lot of bodies in front. And they'll throw pucks on from every angle. Every shot's a good shot. Yeah. You know, so a goalie can never relax. Dangerous puck bouncing out front. Farrar to Ferguson. Ferguson. Chip and chase. Moore. Moore trying to 
get in front with it. He was bumped off the puck. There's Ferguson. Ferguson tried to connect with Moore, just missed. Just missed him. Got to like the, the, the freshman Ferguson and, and what he's shown. Yeah, that was, that was a good little play there. Cronella trying to connect with Pooley. Laughing behind the net now. Maybe the most talented of the freshman class, Ferguson. Yeah. Here's Brophy. Brophy just wide of the net, laughing. Retrieves it. Sends it softly behind. 2.05 to play in the period. 2-0 Holy Cross. Pooley on the back check. And Holy Cross looks to break it out. Myrator with speed. Gains the blue line. Laffin scores! Wow. Laffin on the redirect. His 10th goal of the season and a huge insurance marker for the Crusaders. They lead it 3-0. That was a good play. I was, I was worried about Mirator getting, getting hit here. It looked like he had his hit down for a second, but just threw it at the net. Got a nice bounce. Good job going to the net. Uh, I guess good job. I mean, Holy Cross defensemen have, have, have jumped into the play uh, at good times yeah. tonight. Uh, Coglin and, and right there, Muratori. Yeah, and you mentioned about just driving the net, laughing, just going to the net. And the puck, you know, hits a skate, and comes out to him. Johnny on the spot, but good hands. Yeah. Good hands to send that one into the top corner opposite side. What an insurance goal that is for Holy Cross. Yeah, that's big. Now if you could just, I mean, minute 40, you just want to yep. do exactly this. Cycle it down low, keep it in their end, and try not to give them a goal. Coglin fires. Farrell sent it right in front. That was a good feed from Ryan Farrell. Coglin, beautiful poke check. Breaks up the rush. Mulcahy comes back the other end. Mulcahy one-on-one. -on -one. Mulcahy to trap. Trap. Steps in from the blue line. Poked away from Trap by Valenzuela. Here comes Brown. Trap gets back. Battling with Brown for it. Collects. Loses it. Valenzuela in front. Coglin back defensively. One minute left in the period. RIT with the puck. Here's Brown. Turnaround sends it across the crease. Nothing doing. Pooley couldn't collect. Cameron. Brubaker. Valenzuela, Brown with that big screen in front. Valenzuela dangles his shot. Turned aside, Mulcahy, Coglin. Now Trapp and Valenzuela will go for it. Brown in front, but it was poked away. Good defense from Coglin. Holy Cross can't clear the zone with it. Here's Coglin, 14 seconds remaining in the period. And Holy Cross able to clear the zone. Pooley, the bouncing puck. Back for Trap. Six seconds. Coglin to Mulcahy. Mulcahy takes a hit in open ice, but sends it into the RIT zone. Holy Cross with two goals in the second period. They take a 3-0 lead going into the period. Mike, your thoughts on that period? I thought that that was a, that was a really good period by Holy Cross. They capitalized. I thought the power play did good. I mean. T.J. Moore is, he's playing great tonight. He's all over the place, and um, yeah, I thought that they, I mean, did a good job defensively at the end there, not to give one up. That would have been heartbreaking to, you know, that two goal lead in hockey. Uh, everyone says it's tough to sleep in hockey, so that was a great period. Yeah, good team effort so far for Holy Cross. They lead it after two periods, three nothing. We'll send it back now to the Worcester News tonight's studios for a news update. All right, the second period, Holy Cross, all Holy Cross on the scoreboard as it was Danny Lopez getting his 11th of the season. Beautiful shot, that one was on the power play. And then Laffin driving the net. Tommy Myrator firing it on and Laffin right there, beautiful hands. Yeah, I think the, I mean, the key for the, the Crusaders, the guys you really, really want going on this team are Scott Pooley, TJ Moore, Danny Lopez. And Pooley's got three points tonight. He's got three assists. TJ Moore's got 
got a goal and an assist tonight, and Dean Lopez has got a goal. So, uh, so surprised that they're winning, and, and that's what they need to be successful. We're talking about the kind of the hundred point club. Both T.J. Moore and and Pooley both came in with uh, to this game with 92 points. Uh, Pooley's now at 95, and T.J.'s at 94. So they're closing it on a pretty you know, pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, it shows uh, longevity, it shows consistency, and it certainly is very impressive. 3-0 Holy Cross here in the second intermission. We'll take a short break. When we come back, the third period's coming up. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Charter TV3 and UMass Memorial Healthcare have teamed up to bring you the latest news and trends in healthcare. Health Watch, presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare, brings you the healthcare topics that are important to you. From stroke prevention to allergies, skin care to sports injury prevention, and nutrition to pregnancy, Health Watch at UMass Memorial Healthcare informs you on the issues that affect you on a daily basis. Health Watch on Charter TV3. For extended interviews with UMass Memorial Healthcare experts, log on to our website. Welcome back, everyone, to the Heart Center and the hockey rink here at the Luth Athletic Complex, Holy Cross. In front of RIT, 3-0 here as we enter the third period. And again, the Crusaders coming in tied for first in league play. You know, Mike, too, just some of the things that David Berard's done and, and the father-son weekend being one of them, you know, you as a former player here, how cool is that? How oh, special cool. is that? I'm, je I'm jealous every time I come here. Just the the stuff that they get, I mean, this Luth complex, too, is, is incredible. Uh, but even all the stuff they do just to prep for the game, which I think the dad's got a little behind the scenes look at. You know, it's the same way, you know, my dad asked me, how was it? I said, we just practiced and that's it. Right. And you know, <laughs> don't tell me any of the other stuff you do, but um, I mean, just the video and all the prep that they do uh, for game weekends, I heard the, the, the feedback from the dads was this is amazing. Yeah, and they got to see that. They got to sit in and they, and they, you know, brought them in one of the meeting rooms and they did the video work and they did, you know, the pre-scout. Nice shot there from the wall. A little jamming in front as Lopez fired it on. But, the, yeah, the dads got to see the, the scout, you know, and how they work and how they use the video and, and everything that goes into it, the lifting and, and then the on-ice stuff with the practicing. And then even they got to go into the locker room after the game and they have some rituals when they win, some certain yeah. things they do. And the dads got to be a part of that. I just think that's really, really cool. Yeah, I saw, I follow, I follow Coach Berard on Instagram. And at the end of every win, they do a team, they do a team picture in the locker room. The dads were a part of the picture. I thought that was really cool. That was the first time I, I knew they did something like that. But I think that that helps with, I mean, little things like that help with even recruiting. I mean, oh, those yeah. dads are going to tell all their dads, hey, you should send your kid here. Yep. Yeah, they got some good things going on, and they got a great coach. And then, as we mentioned, the academic quotient of it, too. I mean, you have 24 of 28 guys with a 3-0 or better in the fall. Oh, Pooley with a one-timer between the dots and the save. That would have been a good way to... Yeah, start get him back again too with a goal scoring touch. Yeah, this is the guy you want with the puck. He he has had, I mean, if you look at just the stats on the year, he has fired over you know close to 130 shots on net, um, and no one else. I think you know Danny Lopez is about 80, and T.J. Moore has about 80, but just he shoots the puck a lot. That's why he scores a lot yeah. too. And, and he's doing it from the goal scoring areas. You know, they're not coming Definitely. from a stride inside the blue line where you're kind of just feathering it on net. Yeah. They're coming from, you know, right top of the crease in the, in the goal scoring areas that, you know, Coach Perard and his staff like to see. Yep. But that's the, you know, the difficulty. Nice shot on Ferrar, Durar rather. Andriano's been tested here in the opening couple minutes. Holy Cross not sitting on that 3-0 lead. Here's Gerard. 
Had a good bid. Chips it on and goes, drives to the net. Andriano makes the stop. I think those are those are always good plays with a lead, starting out with a, a face off at the offensive end. Time to get some fresh guys out here. So it's interesting. He's putting out the Mackey line. He's he's tried to put them out. He tried to put them out twice in the second period, and he has last change, so he can switch them. But every time he did it, Wayne Wilson put the Eric Brown line out, so Gerard would pull it pull him right back out. So <laughs> it's good to see him get some. He gets they got fresh legs. And in the back-to-back -back games, too, the way the schedule is, if you can get that fourth line, you know, some good time, yeah. you're only helping your own cause out by keeping the legs a little fresher on Absolutely. the first two, three lines. There's Mackey. Mackey chips it forward. Surowick. Surowick cycles it back. Kessel lost it. Surowick turns, fires, or Kessel, rather. He's got two goals this season, the freshman. RIT trying to wind it up. Charlie Barrow goes back for it defensively. Collects. Back there with Coglin, the defensive pairing. Just missed yep. on that. That was a planned tip, tip drill. Farrell just missed it, though. So the faceoff will come back in the Holy Cross zone. 17.46 to play. I think you're going to see a lot of 40-second shifts, a lot of quick shifts for Holy Cross. Keep fresh legs out there. Barrow. Lopez able to chip it out. Mulcahy, senior from British Columbia. Hoglin shot block. Rebound. Oh, good bid, bang. Good chance for the Coughlin trying to keep it in. Here's Kearns with a break. Kearns. And he lost it. Good back check by Mulcahy. Or, Gave sorry, by Farrell. Think about, yeah. Here's Farrell. Tried to slide it across. Broken up there. Tigers coming back the other way. Kearns again on the stretch pass. Myra Tor gets back there first. And now Brophy will retreat in his own zone. Collect. Cornella and McKay battle for it. Laffin helps out. Cornella dumped. I think you might see a little bit more dump and chase by Ole across this period, too. A little less try to enter. Here's Powell with speed. Around Brophy. Good job by Pooley coming back to help out. And Pooley breaks it up. Team defense. The forwards getting in, involved as well. Yeah, they don't have a lot. Holy Cross does not have a lot of one, dimen like one dimensional players. I can't think of any. All of them help out on the defensive end. Here's Pooley. Pooley trying to wind it up now behind his own net. One timer deflected in front, deflected wide. That might be in. Let's see. That's close. It's really close. Thrown on net from behind the goal line. Barrafato hangs on. Coach Burrard not too happy with Pulley's decisions on there to bring it back into right. but but the butt back into the zone a couple times and then lost it. That's a tough save. That was a good, good composure. I don't know if they're reviewing this, but that was pretty close. Good composure by, by Barrafato. Yeah, they are going to review um, it. Those are always smart plays. You saw uh, Shillick Bruins game the other night. Pasternak just threw one um, from that angle. And as a goal, it's hard to, hard to hold that post sometimes. Yep. We'll see. It's going to be hard for them to, yeah, I don't to see. And when do they blow the whistle? I don't. I, I just. I, I think can't it's find the puck. puck. I don't yeah. know that. Yeah, I was going to. I don't know that the puck is on the ice. I think it's up in Paul Barrafato's pads. There wasn't a lot of conviction from the RIT players that it was in. No. Uh, which usually 
you know, if, if, you, if you're down there, you see it cross. Paul Barifato with a 2.5 goals against average, 921 save percentage. Yeah, we're talking about the parity in the league. I mean, preseason, the preseason poll I was reading earlier, and consensus Air Force number one. Yeah. And, um, they could potentially be in last place. I don't know what they're doing tonight, but they could potentially be in last place after tonight. They're, they have 14 points. Last place is 13 points. So they're, you know, 10 of 11 right now. And then RIT, you know, for them to be 500 at this point in the in the season, that doesn't usually happen. Right. But and they could, if it keeps going like this, they'll be below 500 after tonight. And like that across. Air Force lost their, their goalie to Shane Starrett, uh, turned pro after last year. He was a sophomore. Yep. Remember, he was one of the best goalies. We saw him here, one of the top goalies in the league. Definitely. And he turned pro after his sophomore year, so he doesn't owe the Air Force any, any time. And he was an ECHL All-Star this wow. year. As a, as a rookie, he was an All-Star. And at the All-Star game, they had, you know, like a goalie competition with the shooting and in one-on-ones. He won it. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. It was it, great. He's a Massachusetts kid, too. It's funny. The other goalie, the goalie for Army, who I thought was the best goalie in the league, Parker Gahagan. Oh, yeah. He left and went pro. So he went directly. He went to San Jose um, and went to their AHL affiliate after he had he had some delays to get that, um, you know, the whole Army situation. The release. Yeah, the release settled. And then. You know, he wasn't playing for a while, and there was a lot of talk that he was going to be one of the Olympic goalies, which I thought would have been really oh, cool. I mean, he's a phenomenal. talented player. You carry three goalies, and oh, that would have been he's great. really good, really good. And he's an Army guy. I'm like, right. oh, he got to put been, this guy on the team. would have been perfect. No yeah. goal. Yeah, that would have been perfect. John McCarthy, who got selected for Team USA, is a kid from Massachusetts, played at St. John's Prep, actually played football and hockey. No uh, his father, former captain of Holy Cross hockey. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. his dad played hockey here at Holy Cross. He's a dentist and a former captain of the Holy Cross hockey team. And John's got named to the, to the Team USA, the Olympic team, and uh, he's playing for San Jose's AHL affiliate, the San Jose Barracuda. Oh, and, that's neat. And just thrilled. You that's know, he's a, a Massachusetts kid. He knows his Olympic history and is a BU guy, too. He knows. You know, certainly the 1980s and that team with uh, Jim Craig and Mike Arruzzioni, Dave Silk. That's cool. Jack O'Callaghan. Yeah, so he was thrilled. I got to talk to him on the phone, and, boy, he was pumped. He was absolutely pumped. That's really neat. I don't know if you, whole family you just, saw so. the, uh, did you see the Bobby Butler video by chance? Oh, I loved it. So Bob, the guy who took that video, J.R. Butler, played here. That's at right. Cross, and he's, he's kind of the, he spearheads all the alumni, the hockey alumni events, but. Uh, that was a pretty cool video, too, because his dad knows everybody in hockey. It's a good point. <laughs> really Long-time coach of the Marlboro yeah, High School hockey good team. Good family, yeah. Yeah, they are a good hockey family. I didn't know that JR took the video. Yeah, he did. I remember him here. He was sitting on it for five days, he said. he couldn't. They couldn't tell anybody about it. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. What a great moment, you know? Telling your dad that you made That's the really Team neat. USA Olympic yeah. hockey team. I mean, it's special wherever you are, but I, I think of the two states in the country, of Massachusetts and Minnesota, yeah. more than any, yeah. of just how, just the history with Team USA and, and oh, how definitely. big it is. You know, kids grow up in this state, and in Minnesota, and the Olympics mean something, and playing for Team USA. Definitely. John McCarthy's got a chance, too, to, to wear a letter on his sweater. Oh, that'd be great. I know. That'd be great. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to these Olympics. I am, too. Yeah. I didn't realize that about Parker Gehagen. Nice save. Barifato, the rebound. Shot wide. But wow, that would have been such a great, great call for them to take him. Oh, it would have been awesome. Oh, Army guy. Unless they were just mad, and maybe Army was, that he left early. <laughs> you know, I'm sure, you know, you yeah. got it, such a good goalie. Same with Air Force. 
Cooley shovels it back into the RIT zone. Under 14 and a half minutes to play. Whistled wide of the Holy Cross net. That one deflected wide as well. Moore coming back. Good back check by TJ Moore as he breaks it up. Durar hustling on the four check. And that one goes up into the rafters. Moore giving away a lot of sides. Battling hard. 5 8. Taking on 6 4. <laughs> we got a timeout here at the rink. It is 3 0 Holy Cross in the third period. Hi, my name is Tiffany Holland. I'm Zach Lanning. I'm Megan McGeary. My name is Ed Ryan. And welcome to College of the Holy Cross. So, when I was looking at colleges, I had a ton of questions. Like, can I play my violin and study to be a doctor? This is where I ask, how many ways can I surprise people? What does it mean to be on a team? Who am I and where am I headed? At Holy Cross. The more I ask, the more I learn. Holy Cross. Ask more. David Berard talking things over with his team. Holy Cross with a 3 0 lead. 13 56 to play in the game. I think, I mean, if I'm guessing, I think one of the things is, is I mean, they, I know they're a possession team, but at this point, you just want to be playing in RIT's end. And yep. I think there's going to be a lot more kind of dump and then just try and cause turnovers, keep it down there, cycle. And, you know, goal wouldn't hurt either. No, you're right. And he went back to these, these guys with fresh legs. Mackie line. Kessel. Trying to keep it in. Barrow communicating with Coughlin. Barrow chips it up the wall. Oh, Mackey almost a chance for a breakaway. Andriano. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad thing right there. It's kind of another offensive zone face off. And yep. Coach Barr can see what what matchup he wants here. So he's going with the RIT. He's got their, their guns out. Brock Sheehan, the associate head coach here at Holy Cross. His brother played, uh, played here at Holy Cross. Gerrard shot just over the crossbar. Barrow. Here's Gerrard. Winds up, tees it up just wide of the frame. Ferguson battles for it. Moore. Moore blocked. Durar collects. Durar whips it in front. Andriano got a stick on it. Up into the netting. Faceoff will come to the right. Well, they're going to bring it to the left of the Rochester goalie. It's a good pass by Coughlin to, to, to spring. TJ Moore gave it over to Durar, but he's impressed with Coughlin. Coughlin's got Good awareness on when he's got to really fire a pass, and he can put a lot on it. Not going to see much harder passes than the one he just made. And now RIT with some speed getting into the zone. That one blocked by Skelly. Sent down the ice. 12.45 to play in the third period. 3-0 Holy Cross over RIT. The two teams will play again right here at the Hart Center tomorrow night. And then from here, Holy Cross has five games on the road. And their final game of the regular season against AIC will be here at the Hart Center before the playoffs begin. A lot of work to do, though, between now and then. The Crusaders tied for first in the league. But, Mike, you talked about just the... Margin of error is so slim in this league and the, the point differential between the top and the bottom. It's unbelievable. I mean, if you look at some of the other conferences, like the Big Ten, for example, Notre Dame's got 30 more points than, than Michigan State. I mean, there is a huge, huge discrepancy. But in this league, it's, I mean, it, it'd be the worst thing you could bet on is Atlantic hockey right now. <laughs> <laughs> Game to game and weekend to weekend, you don't know. 
Maritor's shot is blocked. Laffin keeps it in. Here's Pooley. Back for Laffin. Laffin looks. And sends it back behind the net. Cronella battles for it. Sends it in front. Here come the Tigers. Laffin, good poke check. Big hit on the far side on Brophy. Gerard battling behind the boards. Long pass. Charlie Barrow goes back to retrieve. And that one's deflected up into the seats by Logan Ferguson. I like how Charlie Barrow, I mean, he gets back on the puck as quick as he can. He just gives himself a lot, a lot of time to, to try and make a smart play. It's good habit. 11-12 to play. Face off at center ice. Farrell takes for Holy Cross and wins the draw. Not sure if that was face-off infraction by, by Farrell or not, but he let him back in the circle. So could be these two wings here that are standing one feet, yep. one foot behind the lines, but I'm surprised they haven't blown this. Farrell and Miles Powell, and Farrell wins it again. Coglin sends it up the wall, not out. Back in, Barrafato, good pad save. That one came through traffic. Lopez, not able to keep it, not able to chip it out, rather. RIT came in offensively, averaging a a little bit more than Holy Cross. Paul Perifato has been outstanding all yes. season long. Even that last play, I mean, it's impossible to control every single rebound, especially when there's a low shot, but he does a good job of steering the rebounds out of the scoring, the scoring areas. Yeah, that's a great point. Ferguson, rebound! Oh, TJ Moore thought post. he had a goal, he raised his hands. Moore sends it on, deflected up yeah, by Gerard. Right Roman. off the post, that was a good, good opportunity. Moore almost had his second of the night. That would have been that would have been the, the dagger, the nail in the coffin. Here it comes. You can see he gets he gets good piece of it, and it comes down right next to the post here, right off the post. Oh. I think that would have been it. That would have. Yeah. Game, set, and match. Yeah. Under 10 minutes to play in the game. 3 nothing. Holy Cross in front. RIT keeping it in. Trap. Battling for Holy Cross. Trap sends it around. I see a lot of pitching from RIT now. It's a, they need to take some chances. Peacock behind the net. Trap working on him. McKay blocked. Sirowick got it for Holy Cross. Sirowick good poke check. Chips Calling it up the something. wall. Something. It looked like a behind the play kind of penalty. Cross check behind the play. Cross check, yeah. Not Peacock. a great penalty. I mean. There's a good hit by RIT, good four check. Timeout here at the rink. When we come back, Holy Cross goes on a power play. District Attorney Joe Worley. And I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. 
presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Holy Cross going on a power play with a 3-0 lead. And if nothing else, it's just it's two minutes more off the clock Great. that you know, yeah. that RIT is playing shorthanded, even if even if you don't score. Yeah, that's a it's a anytime you take a penalty behind the play, it's bad. But third period with nine minutes left and your team's down three nothing, that's that's not great. But and Holy Cross got this their first unit rested. They do a run in a much much very different power play this year than last year. If you remember last year. T.J. Moore would just skate up and down the left side. They tried to create a two-on-one with him and Lopez. This looks like the Bruins' power play. Uh, Pooley plays the role of Bergeron. Just gets, he's kind of the guy that they want to shoot uh, in the middle, of the, the middle of the ice. And if you make a simple pass to him, that's what they want to do. Down in the corner, battle for the loose puck. Still loose. Pooley. Bumped off it, and that one's whistled down the length of the ice. Parafato stops it behind his own net. Spencer Trapp there. Trapp starts it up ice for the Crusaders. Trapp drops it back to Laffin. Laffin to Moore. Trapp, one-timer looking for Pooley. Now it's Moore, hauled down. Apt has it, Apt sends it out. 108 to play, a 108 left on the power play for Holy Cross. Eight minutes remaining in the game. Holy Cross, all of the drop pass. Ferguson with speed. Wraps it around Myra Tor. And here comes RIT, shorthanded. Coglin. Good one on one defense. Brubaker the shot and a good save by Barafato. Short-handed bid for the Tigers. Another good, another good job controlling that rebound there. Not the, not the best, not the best power play for them. They were really moving it around in the second period. And just haven't been able to cleanly enter the zone and, and set up. 36 seconds remaining on the man advantage for Holy Cross. Face off to the left of Paul Barafato. Going right back to the top unit. Laughing with a big win on the faceoff. Here's Moore. Moore to Trap. Trap will bring it up ice. Drops it back for Laughing. That hit, that hit a player, I thought. I thought so too, but it looked like they were saying that Holy Cross had to clear the zone. Here's Moore. And here comes RIT again, shorthanded rush. Good block by Moore. And the teams are even strength. Moore to Laffin. Laffin streaking down the left side. Tries to center and it's deflected back. Coglin. Coglin rips one just wide of the net. Here comes Powell for RIT. Tied for the team lead in points. Broken up. Holy Cross clears. Apt controls for the Tigers. Powell bumped off. Good play. Good, good check. Sure. Coglin. McKay intentionally sends it wide of the net. Mulcahy chips it out. Mackey was going strong for it. Holy Cross with a chance for a break here. Here's Coughlin. Takes a big hit from McKay. Skelly at the blue line. Through traffic, deflected wide. RIT sends it down, and it is icing. Wouldn't be surprised. I don't know what, what, uh, Wayne Wilson, Coach RIT, is complaining about, but might have wanted a call on something. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, there's 5.48 left. Um, you're down 3 nothing. There's a lot of coaches right now that would say, if I, if I can gain the red line, I'm going to pull my goalie and see what happens. 
Skelly got that one through a host of bodies. Andriano made the save. The freshman Ian Andriano has played the last three games in net for RIT, his fourth straight start. RIT's had three different goalies playing this season. Tired shot. Just wide. Will let. Good, good job by Ferguson. Blocked it. Knocked it out of the zone. Skelly gives chase. Durar. And now Holy it's Cross will clear it. Durar's got a chance. Here's Durar in. Oh, wow. Durar going top corner. What a shot by Durar. A mini breakaway. And he lights the lamp his second of the season. 4 nothing Crusaders. And that was a good job of sticking with it. I thought it. I thought he might have. I thought he might have uh, pushed it ahead a little too far, but he didn't. He stuck with it, battled through that check, and got off a good shot. Andriano wasn't happy with himself, but that was a pretty good shot. I thought. Yeah. I thought so too. And look at the defense. I mean, he's got yeah. people right there on his heels and even on his hands. Snapped it top corner. Snipe show. 4-0 Holy Cross. And we'll see what uh, if RIT sends any physical messages that, hey, we're not going away. We'll be yeah, back tomorrow right. night. We're going to come at you hard tomorrow. Maybe another breakaway here. Pooley, and they'd love to get him back on that scoring track. Coglin goes for the big hit. Renable Coglin does He's not like RIT. He does not like these guys. He's been physically engaged all night. Fairport, New York is for where Johnny Coglin's from. Is that in the Rochester area? That's a good question. I, yeah. One timer, Barafato the save. Peacock blocked. Mackey hustling for it. Coglin able to chip it out. Took a big hit, but that's one of those plays. He chips yeah. it out. Peacock blasted him, but he got it out of the zone, even in a 4 0 game. Trap, good speed. That one blocked by Skelly in front. I'm sure RIT would love to get just one by Barrafato. Yep. Good hit for from Skelly. Confidence. Yeah, and I was going to say to you, what is it like if you do get shut out and then you know you're facing that same goalie the next night? Yeah, it's it's not a good feeling. I mean, I thought that they had a good formula, you know, a, a little bit in the first with just, I mean, actually in the second as well. Just got to, you got to get bodies in front of them. I mean, I, I was feeling that if RT was going to score a goal, it wasn't going to be one of those tic tac toes. It was going to be the screen, rebound, uh, you know, one of those, those, we call them garbage goals. But yeah. It's, uh, but they haven't really got, gotten back to that at all. Here's Farrell. Mulcahy. Mulcahy shot. Save, Farrell on the doorstep. Couldn't get the rebound. Powell with speed. Powell flips it on. And that one's deflected right across the goal mouth. Holy Cross clears. 2.30 to play in the game. 4-0 Crusaders. First of two this weekend against RIT right here at the Hart Center. So important to get that first one of the weekend series. Yeah. You know, we were talking to Coach Berardo, even if you get a point the next game, three points is huge, and it's so rare. Moore, the drop pass, Myron Tour trying to go back to Moore. Moore, tough angle, fires it on. Andriano holds on. But 
even if you can get three points uh, oh, yeah. out of a weekend, it's so rare that you see any kind of a sweep. But three points is a huge weekend for any team in Atlanta hockey. And to start off on a Friday night with two, very big. 202 to play in this game. 4-0 Holy Cross in front. If you feel like you're getting knocked around by the big insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Whether it's a car accident, slip and fall, or dog bite, don't sign anything from the insurance company until you've talked to a lawyer. Hiring a lawyer can double or even triple the initial settlement offer. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Let the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia fight for you. All right, here we go. Holy Cross with a 4-0 lead over RIT. 2.02 to play in this game. Yeah, Paul Marifato has played sensational. Oh, he's been great. And really the whole Holy Cross defense has too, just in terms of blocking shots, I meaning the, the whole team, even the forwards with blocking shots. And, not given a lot of second chance opportunities. Yeah, I agree. That one's deflected wide. Battle behind the RIT net. Here come the Tigers. Three on three, good shift. Brown sends it in front. Gerard's got a little room here. Gerard just softly chips it back behind the net. He'll go for a change. 120 to play in the game. 4 nothing. Holy Cross. Here's Coglin. Johnny Coglin, three on one. Coglin tees it up. Andriano with a pad save. I like that idea, though. Looking for maybe a rebound if he doesn't score off the of, shot. It's kind of an I don't like you when you take a slap shot that close to the net. <laughs> He's sending the message. Puck goes into the Holy Cross bench. Yeah, I mean, uh, you never know, though. Tomorrow, I mean, Right. Last weekend, Holy Cross wins 3-1 on Friday, and they lose 6-0 on You're right. A Saturday. Four first-period goals in that in that one. No, you don't. You don't know. Uh, we talk about all the, I mean, it's amazing what getting, getting that first goal does for you. I think Holy Cross is 8-3 on the season when they score the first goal. Parafato, good save. Hangs on, and now we got a little physical stuff in front. You mentioned RIT wants to send a message that they're not going to go down without a fight and that there's going to be a tough game tomorrow night right here in this building. 36 and a half seconds to play in the game. Yeah. Holy Cross has benefited too. Uh, we're talking to Coach Brown before the game. They have the least amount of losses. They only have five losses. They have six ties. Right. And those points um, are big. So. In a lot of those ties, too, they came from behind to get him. Like, they were third period deficits that they came back. Yeah. 20 seconds to play in the game. Peacock dumps it in the zone. Brophy goes for it. Brophy wraps it around the boards and out. Time for one last rush if you're RIT. Seven seconds. Apt. Pooley stands him up in the neutral zone. Nice job physically by Scott Pooley. Paul Verifato gets his wow. fourth shutout of the year. The all-time career leader in Holy Cross history in shutouts. Verifato gets his fourth, and uh, Mike, this is a big win for Holy Cross. This is a huge win. I mean, already first place coming in. Some of the other guys have a couple games in hand on them. Uh, but, wow, this is a uh, like a big win in that goal of getting into the top four so you get that 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 buy, that huge rest going into the playoffs. Well, Holy Cross knows that they will remain in first place no matter what happens tonight in the rest of the league as they defeat RIT 4-0.
here at the Hart Center. Our next broadcast will come your way Tuesday night, NCAA basketball. It is a great city rivalry, WPI and Clark. For Mike McGuire, Sean Grady, and our entire Charter TV3 crew, I'm Kevin Shea. Thanks for watching, everyone. So long from the Hart Center, Holy Cross, victorious here tonight.